Hello, welcome. There will be gameplay after this intro. I'll leave a, a link in the video description as well if you just want to skip to the gameplay. But I decided to do an intro because of the significance of Tetris, and I thought it would add some variety. Because, well, for this one in particular, there probably won't be a lot of gameplay. This is a really basic version of Tetris. But I may add these intros to a few other games. Rather, if, you know, maybe if they're significant or I just think the box is interesting. So, as you can tell, if you don't already know, Tetris is from the Soviet Union. It was developed in 1984, and it came to the U.S. in 1987 for Commodore 64, which is what this box is, and IBM PC. Now, if you're not familiar with old computer games, they actually usually use the same box for every system. So, all this is is a sticker that says this is Commodore 64. It's the same box that would have been on the are used for the PC and possibly some of the 1988 releases on other computers. And you can see on the back, which was an annoying thing they did back in the 80s as well, is they only use screenshots for certain platforms. Maybe you get one for each platform it was available on. This happens to only show the IBM PC screenshots, so you don't know what the Commodore looks like, and <laughs> which you'll see in a little bit, it's really bad. <laughs> it looks terrible. I mean, it doesn't look anything like this. Now, they give you a little description of what the game's about, and if you're not familiar with Tetris, which would be surprising, it's it's just a puzzle game about, you know, blocks that drop down from the top of the screen. You rotate them to match them up, clear lines. And the features list here, it tells you all the features in the PC version, and then it puts asterisks at the end of the end of the features that are for the Commodore 64 as, as well. So only those are for the Commodore 64, not all of these things. Although, this is incorrect. <laughs> Let me go down the list really quick. So 10 difficulty levels, that's on PC and Commodore. Five heights to start from, only on PC. Replay last game option, only PC. Randomly generated pieces, obviously that's for both scoring system with top 10 recorded also for both but the scores reset when you turn off the computer so they don't they don't save optional mode to preview next shape to fall both versions but that's not true either because I don't believe there's any way to disable that so it's not optional on the commenter you always see what it is Statistic screen shows a running total of times a particular shape has appeared in one game. PC only. Help screen. PC only. Beautiful background graphics. Now, this says both, but it's PC only. <laughs> you can see the nice graphics. It just, I mean, they're cool designs that are all you know, influenced by you know, Soviet Union things like, you know, the architecture or the hockey team. So which you'll see in the, in the commoner version, it's, it's just a black and gray screen. There's, <laughs> except for the, the blocks, they're colored. So this was published by Spectrum Holobyte. I don't know that there's really a company that you can credit as the developer. There's a few companies involved. Maybe Andromeda Software is who helped bring it to the US. We'll see in the manual, it lists who programmed it. Although Alexei made the, the original, he didn't program this version. So it comes with a floppy disk. If you're not familiar with floppy disks, that's what it is. I use this as a logo for the, the blog and the channel as well. I don't know if they released later versions, but it says version 1.0. And there's the manual and just a registration card I didn't use. So the manual is very brief, but there's not a lot to say about this game. It has pictures of all the different blocks. And it, you need a, a joystick. It doesn't work with the keyboard. You have to, you have to play with the controller. And because the Commodore 64 only uses one button controllers, you can only rotate the blocks in one direction. Some Tetris games let you let you go either way. All right, so credits Alexei is the original concept, but 
This says original design and program. I don't know how to pronounce this by Vajim Grasimov and mentions a little bit about him over here. He was an 18 year old student at Moscow University. So here's Andromeda Software they mentioned. That's a company in London. There's joint, you know, it's coming, <coughs> came into being through the joint efforts of Academy Soft, which is from Moscow. Andromeda Software based in London and Spectrum Holobyte, which was in California. So they just basically tell you how to play. But the wording here is really odd, which makes me wonder who wrote this. I guess Spectrum Holobyte is an American company, but the wording is so poor. It says, we wish you the best of skill in your many games of Tetris to come. Yeah, kind of odd wording. So I don't know if the volume will be slightly different for the video, so you may need to adjust it for the actual gameplay portion, which I'm going to go to. Right now, just be prepared for one of the ugliest <laughs> versions of Tetris you've probably ever seen. Alright, here we are at the title screen for Tetris and Commodore 64. Now, I don't know what we're looking at. <laughs> it's a rather strange image for this game. It looks like a genie-esque being on the left throwing something in the face of another creature. It doesn't, they don't look human exactly, so... I don't know, I think maybe through acid, but with the background the, looks like a dust coming off his hands, maybe some kind of stardust. In any case, it has nothing to do with the game, <laughs> it's just an interesting image. So, I've been playing a little bit before I started recording. Just top score is my initials, and I was just hitting random letters there. Mirror is the default for all the scores when you first turn it on. I think that's just short for Mirrorsoft. I believe it's the publisher for some other regions before the game came to the US from Spectrum Holobyte. So, this is the only screen, aside from the title screen, outside of gameplay. Here is where, with the D-pad left right, you can adjust whether you want to hear music or sound effects. You can't have both. And up down changes the level. That's basically just the speed the blocks will fall at. Alright, here we go. It's Tetris. And it's very quiet. Just makes the little dinks and <laughs> now if you want to slide a block when you get to the bottom, you gotta wait. You know, I didn't slide it fast enough. It it's not like newer games where you, oh, I just double Move, uh, double drop blocks too, but yeah, newer games generally let you slide the box as much as you want really, especially the new game Or keep rotating when you're near the bottom, but this game as soon as you're at the bottom You gotta be quick or you just can't maneuver anything once it touches. It's hard to get it in so Like I said when in the intro the box says you get the beautiful background graphics, but as you can see here just like the title screen, it's just a monochrome color scheme. Well, no color at all, basically. <laughs> and that's the only image you'll ever see in this. They don't change screens like those IBM screenshots, PC screenshots. Had four different images on the box, but not here. You just get this. I don't know if they thought they were going to get those images in the Commodore version and they just didn't fit due to memory because the Commodore Connect I mean you think it could have a few or something better than this really so I think they just went cheap on it for some reason because there are a lot of great looking Commodore games that are I don't know colorful <laughs> and there are nice games and this game is the gameplay is so basic I, I don't see why they couldn't have gotten more graphics in here because for the blocks, they only use six colors, I believe. So yeah, as far as Tetris goes, this one is rather disappointing. In fact, I didn't really like it much. I like Tetris in general, but when I first played this, I really didn't love it. And if I were to review it today, I wouldn't give it a very high score even though it's a significant game 
and there's, there's so many versions now, and it's one of the best known games of all time, but that was largely due to the, the Game Boy. So this, like I said, came out in 1987. The Tetris itself was created in 1984, but in 1989, when the Game Boy released in the U.S., it was packed. It had Tetris as a packing title, and that made it really popular. Part because it's a great portable game, and I mean the Game Boy sold a ton of systems, so a lot of people had Tetris in their game library. So yeah, I had a Game Boy, I still have it, and I do like that version of Tetris. I played it a lot more than this one. You know, sometimes I'm dropping two blocks in a row that's a completely accident the d-pad's just really sensitive so if you want to play the original tetris i would skip this and go for the pc version even though i haven't played it it just looks much better on the box oh, i thought there was a space there but that was a gray block oh well I'm playing with a Sega Genesis gamepad. I mentioned before in other videos, I believe, that uh, the joystick port on the Commodore 64 is the same as Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, Atari 2600. So you can use you know the system's controllers with each with any of the systems as long as there's enough buttons on the controller. And since the Commodore only supports one button, any controller will work. So I'm using a Genesis 6, Genesis 6 button, but only the one button works. Which would be... It's the B button. It's in the, kind of in the middle of the controller. Man, the game is very quiet without the music. Really, this the gameplay portion doesn't even take up much of the screen at all. As you can see it's really narrow down the middle. And because there's not much here, this is a really fast loading game. If you ever use a combo or a lot of games take quite a few minutes to load, I guess. But this one is about 45 seconds it loaded up. Alright, I should probably lose intentionally right now. Just uh, switch to uh, the music. Just have to exit the game. So... And... <laughs> that was an accident. Yeah, I can just drop all the pieces. Yeah, like I said, it's sensitive. I, I didn't mean to hit the button like that. I guess I held it probably. Alright. Turn the music on. I guess I'll up the speed a little bit. Just with a sensitive controller, and sometimes it's just hard to rotate it and move it well with the controller. I don't like to go too fast. Although, there isn't too much else to say, I guess. I do want to mention the new game, Tetris Effects. That Oops, I doubled that one. It uh, just came out recently. Uh, I'd say two weeks ago, maybe. That game is, is really great. It's um, If you like Tetris, obviously, it's a great version. The only negative thing I would say about it is it, it's a little too flashy sometimes to the point where some of the effects make it hard to see. Like, Briefly, like for a second, but a second can be important when the bricks are falling fast. That, you know, like if there's a bright light, some kind of explosion effect while you're playing, it can hinder your, your view of the current falling piece. I mean, I have bad eyesight, though, for one, so that doesn't help, but cause sometimes I also have a hard time seeing where there might be like a gap in the playfield, like where you, there's a notch to drop a piece in. 
because the game uses all different objects like different graphics for the blocks they're not always just solid blocks which is nice it's a good variety and they look great but sometimes it can make it harder to see like, like there's a journey mode where you go through everything and then you can replay those levels you know just choose the levels you like best like and just play one but when you're going through them all they're constantly changing as you clear, I think you have to clear 36 lines per level and you jump to the next one. So the graphics keep changing. Which again is nice, but you just have to adjust really quick sometimes. So what you get is like... You'll get, um... Let's see, like dolphins jumping out of the water as you drop blocks. In one level, just rotating the pieces affects the music. It's like you're making music when you play. One has windmills and the pieces, like windmills in the background, and then the pieces are like gears that rotate. And as you connect pieces, uh, there's like camels crossing a desert. Uh, I'm trying to think what they all are. There's a lot of them. Some are just, you know, shapes and things in the background, like bubbles. And I made a video though, so if you want to check out what the latest version of Tetris looks like, especially compared to this, I'll have about a 10 minute video up. I'm not going to talk in it though, it's just clips from the journey mode. I just skip around to show a bunch of different ones, get an idea what the game looks like. I should have that up the same day I have this up. It's already put it together. That's only on PlayStation 4 though, so you, need, you, know, you can't play it on computers or Xbox One or Switch. It's published by Sony, so I don't think Sony owns the rights. I don't know for certain though. It's possible it'll come to something else later, but it's also compatible with VR, which I don't have, so I don't know how it looks in that. But. If you have VR, it's probably a great game to try. Especially if you like Tetris or puzzle games in general. But like this, it, it's the same overall. I mean, you're just dropping blocks, piecing them together. much else to say about this. If you watched um, a Speedball video, which is my first one playing, or Commodore 64 video I uploaded for this channel, you knew, you'd know my Commodore broke, so it's been a while since I was able to make a Commodore video. I went with Tetris because the new game recently came out, because I did just get it fixed. It took me a long time, I think it was back in February maybe when it broke. I just kind of tinkered, I could not figure out what I was doing, eventually I mailed it to someone for repairs. I think it was damaged by the original power supply. If you have an old Commodore and you say, hey I have Tetris, let me hook it up and play it. I'd recommend not using the original power supply, because apparently they damage the computer now. Like maybe they are fine when you first got it, but over time... I mean, I'm not an expert on this, but apparently, just don't use the original power supplies. Because they can damage components inside. So you can... Some people make their own, I don't know how to do that. So the person that repaired mine makes them, so I bought a power supply from him. You can order them... online. The yeah, Commodore was much, was like, really popular in Europe, so usually... You need new Commodore parts. Sometimes you gotta import them from the UK or some or Germany. Doesn't cost too much more though, as far as shipping. Cause I also some record videos. I uh, 
bought, I think I'm from the UK, I bought an S-Video cable for the Commodore. So I'm actually, well, it's recording on the computer, I'm playing it on my TV, which is, you know, 1080p, HDTV. But I had to run the S-Video to the recording device, and then to get that, the HDMI cable didn't output it properly to the TV, so I then had to buy another device, which I guess converts it to a signal my TV understands. That was just like a $10 device I found online. Plug an HDMI cable into one end, and then it outputs, you know, audio video cables, you know, red, white, yellow. Oh, composite if I have that right. Oh, yeah, I should know all this stuff considering how many game systems I own and have hooked up over the years. But so much else to say about this as you can see it's just dropping a few colored blocks. Good old 80s style music and an image background I don't understand. Alright, so I guess I will end it here. It's doing pretty good. So I'll end it. I just end the game. Go back to the cool title screen. Alright, so there you go. A look at the first Tetris released in the US on the Commodore 64. So, thanks for watching.